and welcome to another episode of Beer Club. I'm going to keep this episode short because I don't know if you can tell I've got a bit of a cold, but I wanted to address the elephant in the room. The elephant in the room being that the cost of purchasing a perfect draft keg has gone up by a fair old amount this year. Unfortunately, it's the current economic climate we're living in, and it's certainly not just perfect draft that this is happening to either. Even the price of a blade keg has increased this year as well. But even with that in mind, the actions of this particular gentleman seem a little excessive. In September this year, staff members at a local Nisa store in Glasgow couldn't quite believe their eyes when they spotted on their shop CCTV an opportunistic man trying to steal alcohol from the premises. Nothing unusual about that you may say, but the man in question was trying to stuff a 6 litre perfect draft keg of tenant's lager down his trousers. Police were naturally called in to investigate the incident and as at the time of recording this they have actually found a suspect and made an arrest. But despite the unsavoury incident, the family run star have vowed to help those genuinely in need. For example, if there's a customer out there that needed milk or bread or baby formula or nappies, that sort of thing, they would help out. But of course, if you're trying to jam a six litre keg of tenants down the front of your jogging bottoms, well, that's not really a crime of need or desperation now, is it? After the family run store decided to share the pictures on social media, the man with the tenants down his trousers began trending for a while. Beerhock saw the funny side of this, and seeing as they had a number of kegs in their warehouse of short dated Punk IPA, they decided that they would provide a discount code to anyone that put a photo of themselves on their social media with a perfect draft keg down their trousers, with the hashtag pants for pints. What would happen is that the next time they would place an order, they would get a free keg of Punk IPA thrown in with their next purchase. Well, you know me, I'm certainly not going to turn down a challenge like that. So here I am with a keg of palm plonked into my pants because I'm going to put something decent down there, I'll have you know. And it was worth it because Beehawk were quickly in touch with a code for me to use in my next order, which you can see here. As you can see, I've also ordered some October Fest themed beers, uh, which is fantastic because I've been trying to get hold of these for a number of years now, the Spaten and the Lowenbrow Oktoberfest special editions, so I'm going to be reviewing those in a future video. But first, let's get this punk reviewed, seeing as we've got a short Hello. date on it. <laughs> now, this is actually the third time that I've reviewed punk IPA here on the channel. Previously, I'd covered this as part of a comparison video against Aldi's cheeky copycat version of Punk IPA, known as the Anti-Establishment IPA. Aha, I see what you did there. In fact, I did this twice, because the recipe and the packaging for the Anti-Establishment was changed about a year later. But this is gonna be the first time I'm reviewing it on Perfect Draft, reviewing the Punk. So, what's it like? So I'm getting an absolute perfect pour of this into a proper brew dog pint glass. Has to be done, got to use a proper glass. So there in the glass, it's a golden amber colour with quite a hazy appearance. We've got about a finger's worth of white head. We're getting slow moving levels of carbonation. There's nothing crazy going off in the glass, but you can certainly see the bubbles moving around. On the aroma, we're getting a pleasing smell. There's a bit of grapefruit going on, a touch of lemon and orange peel. On the taste, we're getting those recognisable levels of sweetness to begin with. It's refreshing and fruity. We're getting that grapefruit in there. We're getting that passion fruit. We're getting citrus. It's quite malty. It's very flavoursome, floral and hoppy. It's brew dog. <laughs> it's, it's brew dog punk, punk IPA as, as, I, as I know and love it. But this is as good as what it'd be if I'd gone into a bar or gone into like one of brew dog's own bars and, uh, and ordered it on draft. That's, that's how good it is on the perfect draft. Now, I understand that BrewDog have changed the recipe for their Punk IPA in recent years, but the only difference that I'm noticing is that it doesn't seem to have quite the same amount of bitterness on the back end like it used to have. Uh, Punk IPA used to be one of the most um, bitterest West Coast IPAs out there, but most of that seems to have gone now. So that really depends on how you feel about having a uh, a bit of bitterness on the back end. Some people might prefer it, some people would, would rather not have it. I don't care what people say, I still love Brewdog, I still love a good pint of punk. 
proper enjoy that. You know what, that shot dated, but it still tastes fantastic to me. So, thank you, Beer Hawk, for the free keg of Punk IPA. And all I had to do was stick a keg down my trousers. <sighs> Cheers. Personally, I don't understand um, why people seem to be jumping on the Brewdog negative bandwagon. It seems to be the fashionable thing to hate on Brewdog these days. It's almost like, how dare you become so successful? It's ridiculous, really. I mean, Vocations, Life and Death is probably going to be my go-to now if I want a West Coast-style IPA on Perfect Draft, but I certainly wouldn't say no to a pint of punk if it was offered to me. Absolutely not. Did I enjoy it? Yes, absolutely. Would I get it again? Yes, yes I certainly would. Uh, and not to mention that and the Elvis juice as well. But um, I can't be reviewing the same kegs over and over again. I like to go for something a little bit different for reviewing purposes. So coming up in a future Beer Club episode, I've got some more Perfect Draft kegs to review, including the aforementioned Oktoberfest versions of Spatten and Lauenbrau that I finally managed to get hold of. And uh, there's also the small matter that we actually went to an Oktoberfest weekend as well. So uh, yes, that will that will also be uh, be part of that uh, October theme Oktoberfest themed uh, video. Uh, I've also got ready for review at some point the Camden Hells Lager and uh, Abnum's Ghost Ship, uh, two other fairly recent additions to the selection available on Perfect Draft and uh, at some point I'd like to get hold of Jeremy Clarkson's Hawkstone Lager as well. Um, he's been featured quite heavily recently in some of the uh, advertisements, you know, with, with, with um, a few choice words to say about George Clooney and the uh, coffee machine that, um, that he, he's advertised previously. But uh, yeah, watch out for those uh, videos coming soon. Uh, until then, uh, please do be sure to leave a like and a comment on this video. Please do subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell to be notified of whenever I have a new video up for you to watch. Uh, make sure to share this video across your social media platforms. And whilst you're at it, you can give my social media pages a follow as well. Finally, thank you very much for stopping by the Mabbers Tavern. I hope I don't come across too bummed up on this video. Um, I really want to be getting back to uh, drinking the lager at some point rather than sipping the lem sip, but uh, let's, uh, let's hope that we're better for next time. And um, yeah, until then, we'll, uh, we'll catch you next time. Bye bye for now.